assist us, the many students that came up to me and said how sorry they were, how disturbed they were, and thanked us for what we did. I want to thank those who behaved properly. And again, I think it's important to note that our job would have been that much more difficult without those in the, in the community that lent a helping hand to us. Uh, my closing remarks are this. This is an active criminal investigation. If you, I point you to the riot statute, RSA 644-1. You can see for yourself the penalties are very service for, serious for this type of event. And again, we will bring whatever resources to bear that Chief Neola and the King Police Department need to identify and bring those to justice that committed these uh, violent acts and this behavior upon the city. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. Mayor Lane. Uh, thank you, John. This was a horrible event took place and yet I want to start off by expressing my appreciation to those who responded to this incident on Friday and Saturday. That includes the Keene Police Department, the Keene Fire Department, the New Hampshire State Police, uh, the tactical unit from the Central New Hampshire Special Operations, uh, the Manchester and Nashua tactical units, the New Hampshire Fire Marshal's Office, the Keene State Campus Security Office, as well as many of the small departments the, the ambulance services, the uh, individual fight, the small fire departments, and the individual police who responded to assist in resolving this incident. Their assistance controlled and dispersed these groups and kept the 55 to 60,000 people who were gathered in downtown Keene for the pumpkin fest safe and out of harm's way. That was the primary goal and that was successful. The question that has probably been asked me most frequently is what is the future of the Pumpkin Fest? This community event has been held for 24 years, although in the past several years there has been increased difficulty in Keene from those who want to organize their own gatherings. It is far too early to determine what the future of the Pumpkin Fest is going to be. That is going to be the responsibility of the organizers of the Keene City Council as they assess the events of this year and the future of the festival and determine what that future is to be. I'm going to put together a public forum in December to hear from the public, to hear from the organizers, and to allow the information to be gathered to allow the City Council to assess the future of the Pumpkin Fest. Finally, I want to thank Keene State College, which has closely worked with the City in controlling the incident that took place near their campus. We will continue to work with them to resolve this matter and will continue to collaborate with them on many other issues of mutual concern that we have we have outstanding. So thank you all for coming and at the conclusion of these statements, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mayor. President Hewitt. I too want to start by offering my sincere thanks um, for the partnership with the city. Uh, local and state officials for everything that we did leading up to this event, everything we've done in the last 48 hours, uh, and what we will do in the future together. I am gravely concerned about the unruly, unacceptable, unlawful, disturbing behavior that was displayed on the streets of our city on Saturday. I was out there, I witnessed it myself, we have to come together as a community and find a mutual solution to these issues. We cannot solve it individually or on our own. For my part, I take my responsibility in this very seriously. I want to reassure everyone that we are looking hard at the evidence we have. We're working with the police department. We have already identified some people from photographs. We're now trying to ascertain uh, where they're from, uh, and if they are from Keene State College, they are going to go through an expedited uh, judicial process with our student code of conduct, uh, and they will be appropriately sanctioned up to and including dismissal from the college. We are also sharing names and information with colleges and universities throughout the New England area. I also want to take the chance to say I take my responsibility to the many, many Keene State College students who share with me in denouncing this behavior. I'm 
Martin, by the spontaneous outpouring of our students on Sunday morning. It started around 7 o'clock, all on their own, going out, cleaning up the mess. Many of them had no part in making. I'm also grateful that they knocked on the doors of our local businesses and expressed themselves as the kind of student uh, that we uh, expect and the kind of behavior we expect uh, from our community within the college. As we continue to gather and, and, and access information, I'm going to be posting regular updates to our website, keeping the community informed of everything that we're doing. Let me close again by offering my thanks uh, to the partnership with the mayor and the city. Uh, and <coughs> I believe that we can find and put that forward. Thank you. Thank you, President Hewitt. Uh, Rhett Lamb, Rhett has a microphone that we'd like you all to use when I call on you for your questions. That will enable us to actually capture your voice so that people who are watching at home will be able to hear the question and we'll go from there. So. Uh, looking for the first question, I did see the hand go up here with the, with the fellow with the tie and then the lady next to you. And please identify yourself, your affiliation, and who the question is directed at. Hi, my name is Adam Sexton with WMUR News 9. Uh, question directed at the law enforcement, uh, particularly Colonel Quinn. If you could just take us through the investigation in terms of uh, what role social media might have played in amplifying some of these parties or incidents. Actually, I'm going to turn that over to Chief Miola because I know that he's been paying uh, some attention to that. Thank you. Um, you know, I think what we're seeing relative to social media is the ability of, of one individual or group of individuals to call upon a number of others to quickly amass in a certain location for a certain purpose. Uh, we did see a lot of social media relative to uh, coming between War Pumpkin Fest uh, from all over number of different campuses and even those who aren't students. So I think it plays a large role in, in how this thing grew so quickly so back uh, to the, the measure that it did. Thank you. The lady next to the gentleman who spoke. Hi, I'm Katie Brace with WBZ TV. My two questions actually for President Hewitt. First question, how many students are you discipline, disciplining right now? And second of all, is the college going to pay any money for the effort that went forth to get all the students under control? So it's too early in the investigation to answer your question about the number of students. Um, as I said, we have identified some individuals. We're now working on identifying whether they're our students or someone else's students. The issue of payment is one that will just have to be discussed going forward. Thank you. Catherine, and then the gentleman right there. Catherine from NECN, and this is directed towards uh, law enforcement. I think at this point, if you're looking to ID some of these people, why haven't you made their images available to the public? We've seen the people on top of the overturned cars. We've seen the people uh, ripping down signs, climbing posts. Are you going to be making some of those images available to the media and to the public so we can, in fact, ID the people you're looking for? I think that's a great idea and it's something uh, that we will look to as we progress in this investigation. Uh, and, you know, our, we are continuing from you know, old out 30 this morning, we've been pulling images off of social media, having images sent to us. We're getting a lot of response from the community already relative to who might be involved and where we might find them, and where we might find images. So as we move forward, that's certain option we may employ in the future when we look at who we're going to prosecute, and, and some of the, I'll call them the heavy hitters, we're really going to look at starting from the folks who, who tipped over the car, uh, who committed the, the damage to the campus, who were actively involved in making themselves known, throwing bottles and rocks at the police and others, and also those who perhaps had the fire. So we're going to prioritize how we move forward, uh, prosecutions and what we're looking for, and then as we accomplish those things, we certainly may be coming to the media to ask for further assistance in identifying those. Yep. There was a gentleman right there on the aisle. And then we'll go over here, Rhett, next. So, okay. Steve Cooper from WHDH in Boston. Chief, um, we heard reports that you perhaps were using rubber bullets to disperse the crowd. Can you comment on that? Yeah, I can't comment on that. And, and 
and secondarily, um, so at this point, no one's been arrested and all of the possible people that were involved in this are back at school now and no one's been brought into court on charges of anything at this point, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. There were a number of arrests over the weekend from Friday night to, to Saturday. We did make 84 arrests. 84 arrests. For various issues. One of them right there. Yes, two of The riotous behavior, those people who committed the criminal mischiefs, um, the, the damage to the car, those are going to require some investigation. Those are going to require pouring through uh, some video footage, through some photographs, doing some interviews uh, to identify and put cases together against, against folks who may have been involved. So those take some time. Those don't occur overnight. Those don't occur within the next 48 hours. Not when we're dealing with something like this. So we anticipate investigations could be ongoing for the next month and perhaps longer. <coughs> and I'm sorry, your first question was about rubber bullets? Yeah, I was wondering if your tactical teams deployed. We did not employ rubber bullets. Uh, Chief Police Department, nor to my knowledge, does the state police have rubber bullets. What we do have are spun rounds uh, that, are, uh, that are fighting from a 40 millimeter Sponge around to deterrence. And I guess the best way to describe it is like a long range baton that if you strike someone with a baton, it's the same effect. And, and it was only employed on those folks who were aggressively and actively stepping out and throwing rocks and bottles at the police. So, yes, those were, were deployed. I would tell you, I think we deployed, uh, I don't have the exact number, so I'm sorry. I, I thought I did, but they were utilizing. And only after uh, we actually ran out of pepper ball rounds uh, were those employed. So, so when you say pepper ball rounds, how many rounds were used? And when you say you uh, ran out of, I don't know how many sponge rounds, approximately. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd have to look at that. I certainly need to get back to you with a number. I don't have that data here. Um, but the uh, pepper ball rounds, I'm, I'm sorry, I think we had about 100 plus that we went through, and those were utilized. Uh, towards people's feet, just to you know, dust up, to, to break the crowd down, and back it up, and then they were becoming aggressive towards the officers. Uh, so once those were exhausted, they did go to the, the exhausted people spun around. And would those be capacitate a, a possible suspect, like a, you know, like a taser gun or something like that? Yeah, they, not like a taser. I, as I stated earlier, they're equivalent to uh, an extended baton type of strike. So a destructive strike to perhaps uh, stop forward motion, to stop uh, the behavior that's occurring, uh, and to dissuade people from continuing. Are you over here? Tom Novak, WKVK News in Kansas. This is for President Hewitt. I understand that I've been form at the college to talk about the college side and the input, because a lot of students feel that it was a select few versus how some people have started to think that it might have been a larger part of the student <coughs> body. Now, with that form tonight, what do you hope to accomplish afterwards in coming to the city with that information? Thanks, that's a great question. So the purpose tonight is to gather our college campus together. Um, people are dismayed. Some of our students are quite traumatized by what they witnessed. Um, many of our students have already expressed their deep concern for what happened and their denouncement of those activities um, of some of their peers. So we want to give our students an opportunity to be heard, uh, and then we want to use this as an opportunity to leverage how we move forward as our campus community, and of course we will share all of the information that comes out of that uh, with our colleagues here in the city. Uh, the, the lady right there behind Ian, and then Ian will be next. Hi, Melanie Funda with the Associated Press. This is for Chief Nilla. Um, so what sorts of charges could you be looking at for the people who are displaying the riotous behavior and possible, you know, of, you know, punishments for that, and also, is it is the state at all? Because uh, I know Governor Hassan's office had mentioned being involved. Can you explain or clarify what their involvement um, in the process is? Sure. First, I, I just want to go back to the gentleman. Uh, 
approximately 10 of those rounds. Uh, and I'm sorry, Melanie, I forgot all of your questions. <laughs> 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 I may have two. Um, so you said that can you tell me what um, what sorts of charges you might be looking for, um, punishments, and then also um, the um, governor's office. The governor's office, and then if you can clarify um, the role of the governor's office and possibly attorney general, if not possible, in the in the process. Both of the charges. I mean, obviously, we'll be looking at perhaps riot. We'll be looking at criminal mischief. Um, Perhaps you know, that'll better be determined as we look at the footage and look at the behaviors. Those are the things that come to mind based upon what I saw that night walking around. So uh, those are the types of charges we would be looking for. Right now. Relative to levels of charge, we would be looking at misdemeanors to perhaps felonies based upon uh, some of the behaviors and the extent of their participation. Now, relative to the governor's office, the governor was uh, absolutely very concerned about what occurred here. Yesterday, she toured the area where this occurred, and she'll be looking at, or she, you know, about to start looking at some legislation that perhaps, you know, might inhibit these type of gatherings and and, and, and the groups that try to bring them together. Uh, so, and nothing concrete yet. This is this is all new to us as well. So, uh, as we work through what occurred and how it occurred and why it occurred, uh, certainly we'll be looking at ways to mitigate it in the future. Yes. Follow-up question. There were there were riots last year as well, much smaller, of course. But so, what was different this year? What happened? What changed? Well, the behaviors <coughs> we saw last year were very similar, to be quite honest. Uh, they were contained within uh, two yards when we just before, and and we decided to contain it there and leave it there. Now, you know, through social media, we had information that uh, some of these groups were going to try and make a run on the main street. First priority was protecting those who were on Main Street. So we took action and came and pushed it back from that occurring. And the difference was this was actually on the city streets. It, it wasn't like it was a party we had to go break up. These were gatherings that occurred on public property, disrupting traffic, disrupting people's lives, disrupting the quality of life, uh, putting people in potential for some serious harm. Not only for themselves, but for their properties as well. So I think there lies the difference that if this was out in, out in the public, that nobody organized it, it kind of came together on its own. Uh, wherein, wherein last year there was an organized party that occurred. Thank you. Are you ready? Oh, oh, yes, Colonel, go ahead. Same, same with that woman. I <clears throat> gave a full briefing to the Attorney General this morning. He's very concerned. and. Uh, at the upcoming meetings, I know somebody from his office will, will, uh, will attend if not himself. To the crimes, I, I think you, you need to look at um, what the potential was for some of these. I saw shields that were smashed from bottles, um, the potential for first, you know, attempt to first degree assault, second degree assault. I think it's inconclusive until we gather all the evidence, but the potential for somebody being seriously injured or killed was there. And I think it's also important for you to know that the chief and I have been in constant communication since we left that night. Uh, we have been talking and preparing and trying to get coordinated, coordinated to move this forward the right way. All right. Yeah. Uh, Freeman uh, from freeteam.com. This question is for Ken Viola. Uh, police were reported shooting pepper balls at houses on Winchester Street in the broad daylight after the street was cleared when the occupants on the porches were merely hanging out as happened every weekend here at Keene. What was the reason for that escalation of violence and do you think it helps the image of the police? Yeah, I, I would actually have to see the video of that and understand why that, that level of police force was used. Um, without having an accounting of what perhaps those folks were doing, whether or not they were throwing bottles at the police or acting aggressive towards them, it's hard to answer that question. We train our officers to use the level of force necessary to calm the situation, to get it under control. So uh, at this point, I would have to assume it's appropriate level of force until we see further. We will be reviewing this <coughs> relative to the use of force. <coughs> From the video we have, the reports that are filed, uh, and your second question was about. How do you feel that sort of behavior affects the image of the police? I, I think if the officers did what they were trained to do and were 